Something just killed my dog. Something killed your dog? My dog went flying through the air over the tree. I don't know how it did it. Okay. some scientists that Bigfoot falls somewhere in this progressive chart of man, a giant hominid related to but not like modern man. 
According to this theory, Bigfoot would have pursued a course of evolution separate but parallel to his human cousins. Dr. Grover Krantz is an anthropologist at Washington State University. Its locomotion is the human design, so we know it's probably our closest living relative. But uh, in terms of um, anything of uh, mental characteristics, no, it's not human. So it is a mixture of ape and human characteristics. And if you want to call that a missing link, that's fine. Now, this is a cast of a jawbone of something that I think is actually the uh, uh, Sasquatch. This is a jaw that's anatomically in between human and ape in its teeth, but it's uh, much larger than any living ape, much larger than a gorilla, for instance. These are known from fossils about a million years old in China, and uh, it has been named Gigantopithecus, and it has approximately the characteristics that our Sasquatch has, so I'm inclined to think that this uh, species just simply is continuing today. The most convincing visual evidence of Bigfoot is a film taken by Roger Patterson in Northern California. Dr. Krantz believes it to be authentic. I've examined the film many times, uh, watching it forward, backwards, stop frame, measured, and everything. And all of the anatomy of the creature is perfectly consistent. <clears throat> it does, just simply does not fit with a man wearing a suit. In fact, a suit of that size, we can establish exactly how big it is. There's no way a man could fit into it. The shoulders and chest are simply too wide. The feet are um, properly designed for carrying that kind of body weight, and uh, that doesn't make any sense uh, unless you've got a body of that size. And Patterson uh, could not have faked any of this stuff. I talked to him about some of the things I saw, and he didn't even understand what I was talking about. This is a cast of an individual that's very obviously crippled. And um, I studied this uh, at some length and found these two bulges on the outside of the foot. Anatomically, they have to correspond to a couple of gaps in the bones on the foot themselves. And the, the bulges in a normal human foot expanded to this size would have been here, but they're shifted forward. Well, anatomically, this means that the ankle weight is shifted somewhat forward. It's not just a gigantic human foot. It's uh, the leverage has been redesigned. And this happens to be redesigned just exactly the way it would have to be for a 800-pound uh, animal. So if the idea of the, that this was faked by somebody isn't uh, quite so simple. If it was faked, it was uh, done by a, a human anatomist who was a real genius, and he had to have laid out thousands of these fakes all over the place, and that uh, just simply becomes impossible. We need a piece of the body. Nothing else will be accepted. I think that there are many other ways of proving the existence of something other than killing that particular thing that you're trying to prove exists. My preference would be to locate a hunter who has shot and killed one, and perhaps because he thought he killed a valuable animal or a peculiar human, he might not have said anything about it. But if he would uh, come forward, um, perhaps we could examine the place where he killed it, and we might find a few bones, and then the whole thing is settled right there. If we don't find such an old kill, then the only alternative remaining is to kill one now. And uh, grisly as that sounds, uh, I think that is probably what we'll have to do. At Washington State University, the prints have been studied by primate anatomist and Bigfoot author, Dr. Grover Krantz. Footprints are just dense in the ground, but they can tell an expert about the foot that made them. From the position of these bulges, I was able to deduce the position of some of the key bones in the center of the foot, and then reconstruct all the bones of the foot, and uh, found most interesting that the center of weight of the ankle was substantially forward of where it is in a human foot. If we had an erect biped eight feet tall and it was going to walk in a human manner, how much farther forward would the ankle have to be placed? I did some simple arithmetic calculations on that, got an exact answer, then I went back and measured my reconstruction. It was exactly correct. That was enough for me to be absolutely sure that those feet were made by a living creature. Is there no way these could be hoaxed? If the Bosberg tracks of the crippled individual were made by a hoaxer, 
There are several considerations. One is that he had to know human anatomy with great detail. He had to be able to devise distortions of the anatomy. And he had to calculate exactly how an enlarged individual would have to be constructed in order to walk properly. That requires uh, an elaboration of thought and knowledge that I don't think anybody in the world has. A human foot expanded to this length would have the bulges about here. This means the heel was relatively longer and the forefoot relatively shorter, which is just exactly the leverage required for a walking biped of about eight feet or two and a half meters tall. That's some quite complex aspects of anatomy there. Do you think that any hoax or anywhere would be up to reproducing those? If any hoaxer was to do uh, this sort of trick, he would have had to figure out everything from zero, whereas I saw the tracks and figured it out. He would have had to know human anatomy, foot anatomy, very thoroughly. He would have to know the effects of absolute size on how the strength increases, but the weight increases faster, how the leverage has to change, how a diseased foot would have to bulge out to the side of the corresponding parts. In other words, he has to be a better anatomist and a more clever, inventive person than I am. And I don't think anybody like that has existed since Leonardo da Vinci. The headquarters of the search for Bigfoot is here at Washington State University in the United States. Anthropologist Grover Krantz has risked his professional reputation by taking Bigfoot seriously, largely because he believes the footprints are real. They're not just oversized human feet. They show seven slightly different characteristics. Uh, five of these I've uh, published in uh, journal articles. Krantz won't disclose the other two traits he says are typical of Bigfoot tracks so that he can more readily detect a fake. Compared to the, length, any very large human the traits Krantz will reveal include flat feet, wide feet in comparison to their length, and toes nearly equal in size. Some prints claimed to belong to Bigfoot have dermal ridges, like a fingerprint. Once again, some have turned out to be all too human, nothing but clever forgeries. Still, Krantz has found examples of Bigfoot tracks he believes would be impossible to fake. What happened here is the individual stepped on a stone and the stone impressed deeply into the foot. Now we know that this was not a fake that somebody put on and rocked it side to side to get the impression on both sides because a very good fingerprint expert was able to trace dermal ridges running all the way across the footprint without any break uh, right through the um, uh, rock impression. And since there's no human foot that this is this large, and no human foot has that thickness of padding, we're quite sure this is real. By studying the Patterson film frame by frame, Krantz has even come up with how he thinks Bigfoot walks. They do swing their arms back and forth in a human manner, but the differences come from, they lean forward at the hip uh, more than a normal human does or should. When they put weight support on one foot, they bend the knee, so. Whether by coincidence or design, most reports of Bigfoot have described the same slumping posture, slightly bent knees and free swaying arms. That's roughly how the Sasquatch is walking on the Patterson film, and that's about how they would have to walk if they weigh 500 pounds or more and are well-muscled. The bones were mere fragments. But scientists estimated the animal stood more than two meters tall and weighed as much as 540 kilograms. They named it Gigantopithecus. This is a specimen of lower jaw, 
of Gigantopithecus. This is the only adult male specimen. It contains the teeth and the tooth-bearing part of the jaw. When you compare that with a human jaw, broken off at the same uh, parts, you can see it's obviously extraordinarily large. Could we still be living with Giganto's descendants? Grover Krantz likes to think so. The descriptions that people give of the uh, Bigfoot are the same size as what we have uh, reconstructed here on the uh, Gigantopithecus. It comes out to be about eight feet tall, hairy, wide-shouldered, a very heavy set, and with a nearly but uh, ape-like face, but somewhat uh, straighter, more vertical. And that's an exact description of the Bigfoot. According to his theory, Gigantopithecus originated in East Asia, where its bones were found. It could have crossed into North America over land bridges that formed during the Ice Ages. This was the same route taken by the first Americans, whose descendants still know the creature as Sasquatch. With nothing to go on but debatable sightings and questionable footprints, Bigfoot, by any name, remains the mere shadow of a ghost. Its bones have never been discovered. But Grover Krantz thinks he can explain that. He believes animals dying a natural death tend to hide themselves before they die. And until someone traps a Bigfoot, no bones will ever turn up. I have talked to so many hunters, game guides, uh, officials, and ask them all the same question. How many dead bears have you found that died a natural death? So far, my grand total is zero. The Patterson subject walks with the body lean, leaning forward and the knees largely bent so that when it takes a step, it supports the leg with a bent knee and keeps two feet on the ground for an unusual length of time. It also lifts the foot very high behind each step, like so. In addition uh, to all those things, it also swings the arms, which is very difficult to imitate, like this. Well, this is something I can do for a few steps rather poorly, but the Patterson subject did it for over 300 feet. I doubt that any human being could be trained to do that. beginning to be a new line of thinking from the scientific community on this subject. Here is Dr. Grover Krantz, physical anthropologist at Washington State University, which explains his view. As a physical anthropologist, I've uh, decided that uh, these creatures do, in all likelihood, exist. <clears throat> the uh, evidence of the footprints is what I find the most convincing. This is an example of one footprint. This is a plaster cast which shows a crippled individual. The foot was twisted, and two bulges appear, calloused structures on the outside edge of the foot, and correspond to gaps in the bones which I've reconstructed here. If this was faked, the person doing it had to be an absolute expert in human anatomy, 